I, the, the question is what do we do about people's imagination? And this, this is the same question around the whole of this of this area. How do you get people to, to think about the, the, the bigger concept? I don't want to say thinking outside the box because it's not a it's not a great term. But how do you get people to think a, a broader vision? And for me, that, the answer is we need to crowdsource. We need to share the ideas with each other. We need to help us why you're here listening to me and I'm here listening. To you, I mean, you know, we need to swap ideas with each other. And the same answer, what does the school of the future look like? What does the university of the future look like? What does the... You know, they will look different. Have a look, here's a... So this is this has been your life, um, for most of you. Some, maybe, no, everybody's old enough. <laughs> Uh, you know, the hardware was the most important thing, the biggest company, like IBM, ICL, huge companies. Then, once we got hardware, we needed software to run on the, on the hardware. Microsoft and Bill Gates clearly enormously wealthy. Once you had the software, you needed to be able to find your way around it. You needed databases. Larry Ellison, of course, the fourth richest man in the world. Did the same on his boat occasion, so I'm grateful. <laughs> Um, but once you had the hardware with software on it and you could find things, you wanted to search. And, and here comes Google, or if you're, if you're under 15, here comes YouTube, because this is the search engine for the youngsters, not, not Google. And once you could find things, you wanted to talk to other people about what you found. And, is Facebook, and haven't you noticed how Facebook is full of people saying, have a look at this, have a look at this, see what I'm doing, you know. But once you can do all that, you want to learn. And, you know, very clearly the next big thing in all this will be learning. Um, but look at all these, you know, the hardware, the, the, you know, the little laptops that came out were not like the big mainframe computers. The software that appeared was not like, you know, each one of these produced something that solved the problem that was completely different to what went before. The next big thing will be learning, but it will be completely different to what went before. So, you know, the libraries will be different, the schools will be different, the universities will be different, cognitive processes will be the same. But this is going to be a really significant change, it really, really is. I mean, you can think, you know, if you think about um, the last century and this century and the millennium, you know, in the, in the 20th century, um, if you wanted to be jolly wealthy, you, know, <laughs> uh, you became a lawyer because a lot of the work they did was about protecting cartels, you know, building barriers to it, protecting the music industry, protecting intellectual property, protecting, protecting, protecting. And they were very wealthy, very hated people, you know. <laughs> but then as we roll through the millennium, it wasn't about protection, it was about scale. Scale became hugely important and scale drawing attention and the, the superheroes were the geeks. You know, Bizstone, Twitter, and golly gosh, Hollywood movie now made about social networking, you know. Um, but that was then and this is now, you know, now. You think about what, what's currency in your life, of course it's memberships, it's esteem, it's contribution, it's enduring, and who are the who are the professionals that give us that, that trust? They're the learning professionals. So, you know, the cool profession has gone from being a lawyer to being a geek to being a teacher, really. Um, and and don't, don't mistake how profound that is. That's really important. You know, teachers are hugely valuable. The impact on teaching and learning will be very significant. Let's have another question.